All right, for the third turn, I'd love to get one of these scanned. I know we're going to end up scanning four tiles. So if one of these guys scans this and then manages to pull someone over here, then when it's his or her turn, we could scan this. Or do we want to just go right up the middle? It seems... Uh, either way, the, the four tiles that we scan this turn are going to be spawning aliens back in the airlock. Uh... I mean, yeah, I guess it's safest to just come up the middle at this point, right? We haven't found any schematics, by the way. There are at least three. Oh, no, we found one. So there are two more schematics out there. We have to find at least one. Uh, the captain has to bring the schematics over to these fellas so they research it, or they have to go over there. Um, well, let's start by uh, activating... Let's get some hatch infrastructure revealed. So not the professor yet. Uh, I guess activating the doctor. Oh, we also need to rescue one of these thralls. Uh, do we trust that they'll catch up with us? Let's activate the doctor first. He has to scan a tile. Uh, it will be... The, uh, this one. Because whatever's in here, Captain Riggs can come up and do Well, we'll end up revealing four before anybody gets to act anyway. All right, we are scanning this tile. It is wide open. It has an air vent for easy bug access. The alert has spawned back in the airlock. draw a tile. So of these uh, 10 alerts, four of them say no effect. Six of them say draw a tile from the stack and spawn it back in the uh, mustering point, which is the airlock. So this is two saucer men, a bug, and I'm actually glad to get it out of the way. Now remember the bug spawns closest to the active player, to the air vent closest to the active player, in this case the doctor. The doctor. There's two of them. The 17 has a lower number. Uh, the unreasonable fear causes everyone to lose one oxygen. All right, that's a precarious situation. But there will be no more unreasonable fear events. Uh, he can lose this if a sentinel enters his tile or if a saucer, if a leader gets an overkill against him. So we want to make sure that doesn't happen. Now here, in the tile that we revealed, these are resolved. We have another event, unnatural growth. Uh, it doesn't affect us at this point, but unnatural growth would reset any damage that has been inflicted on any creature or uh, item. Some of, some of the scenarios have you fighting uh, like a boss or an alien queen or something, and you have to rack up damage. Uh, unnatural growth erases all that damage can be hugely annoying when it's relevant here. Doesn't matter. So uh, two saucer men and a bug. And again, the bug will be in the airlock closest. They're two closest, so they prefer the lower number. And then on the ground is the impossible cube, which I believe just lets you roll and use someone else's. No, that's a mentality helmet. The impossible cube. Uh, roll five dice, success may be spent on the Rocketeer's personal overkill, right? So just free overkill actions. Great for, like, healing, uh, for the captain to hand out his command action points. Uh, this will be fun. Uh, all right, Doctor. Let's do some healing. Love to go ahead and get that tape. Oh, no, that's the professor. Uh, I wonder, should we pull... All right, this is going to be a little crazy. I'm going to use my non-combat action point to move here, pick up the impossible cube. It has three charges. Actually, before I move, let me check. Do I want to take anything? Uh, no. 
The replicator, maybe. So let's wait until we find another schematic. I don't think there's going to be any issue with resources. This we can use to make Mysterium, which will add charges to any alien devices we might want to use. Uh, at this point, we have plenty of charges on them. So, uh, but you know what? He might as well carry it around. And he's going to take the Mysterium from Cookie. He did these things before he left that tile. All right. What is it? Oh, yeah, that was there. Uh, now he's going to use the Grav Wave Generator. Let me make sure I'm remembering correctly the way this works. Move one figure or item within three tiles, one to three tiles closer. So a figure applies to a Rocketeer. He is going to use the last charge on the Grav Wave Generator. Now, normally when a charge is used on a Rocketeer item, I'm just going to move it off of the table. There's no provision for adding charges to depleted Rocketeer items. There is for alien items, which is the Mysterium I just mentioned. So we're going to leave this card out there, even though it has no more charges. And we're going to pull Ben Riggs here. No, we're not. We're going to pull Hannah here so that she can take her turn and we can check this tile when she takes her turn. Uh, all right, that was the uh, doctor's first action. Um, do we want to do healing with the impossible cube? We might as well because it's a free action. And just to be safe, we're going to use this. Using these devices, these items, by the way, is a free action. Oh, and just to be safe, even if we recharge it, we can't use this again. We're using the impossible cube. Actually, you know, I might want to leave this for uh, Captain Riggs to use in case he gets that far forward, which he'll want to do. I'm not going to use it. I mean, healing at this point, everyone's pretty hardy. Uh, where's his fourth health? Oh, you know what? I think it migrated. <laughs> his damage migrated into Dr. Garcia's health uh, because there at four, he's at five. Uh, so we're not going to use the Impossible Cube, uh, but we have used the Grav Wave Generator. We've used that up. Uh, did I put? Yeah, so I'm putting that back. Uh, so, the doctor has moved forward. He's used a device to pull Hannah into his square. He has the air knife, which I guess he will use to fight the bugs. You know, let's just go ahead and use his regular. So, he's going to use, uh, you know, he's, yeah, he's just going to use uh, healing. Once a turn, you can use an action point to do your overkill option. So he heals. He rolls his IQ, which is four. The med pack adds plus one. The first aid kit adds plus two. So he's going to roll seven dice for healing. That is one success, which he will selfishly use on himself. Uh, we can't do that again. So at this point, I think we're just going to, one, give the accelerator hypo to Hannah. The only reason he was carrying it is because he didn't have, I, I just didn't know what fourth item to give him. He never intended to use it. Oh, okay, this is a mess. All right. The grav wave generator has no charges. It has been used. The Impossible Cube has three charges, the Replicator two. Uh, and with his one remaining action, he will use the scalpel, the air knife, on the bugs. Singularly unspectacular. Actually, can I heal again? Oh, I can just do a heal action. I was thinking, all right, heal actions you can do as many times as you want. All right was confusing it with using an action point to fire off your overkill. So I could use an action point to basically automatically heal one health. Uh, oh, actually, here's a question. Am I now violating the rule of using an item once a turn? I think I am if I do that. So I think now it's just going to be a four die roll. Yeah, let me check the rule. 
Okay, it's a little esoteric, but uh, gear can only be used once a turn, but personal gear, and there are, I think, four items that are unique to a specific Rocketeer can be used multiple times a turn. And if we look here, the professor's med pack, sorry, the doctor's med pack is personal to him. So I'm going to get plus one die roll and I can do it in a range of one. So instead of four dice, it's five dice. The first aid kit, we've already used this turn, so that would technically be marked there, and we can't use it again. All right. So four plus one, um, and the folks eligible for healing, everyone except for Captain Riggs. So there are three successes, which is very nice. One, two, Three. And that was his last turn. Again, we will save this. Uh, your turn is done. So next up, uh, Yeoman Hannah, I think so she can scan this, right? At which point we know we need to move near the elevator. Actually, we know we need to get one more thrall. We need to construct the schematics. Uh, we've only got one of those. So we will have Yeoman Hannah go next. She's revealing. All right, why do we think there's an elevator here? Because of a disturbing hum that is not, in fact, an elevator. It's a wide open tile, no hatches, so the professor can't do much to affect whatever happens. Back here, yes, we do draw an alien tile. And the alien tile is two saucer men and a bug. But remember, the bug spawns as close as it can to the active character, which is right there in her tile. And then locally, we have a brain. All right, if we time that correctly, that can be great. A leader, not great at all, and we want to make sure to get rid of all of them. And a saucerman. And lying on the ground, more Mysterium. We're swimming in the junk. All right. So she has revealed for her non-combat action, well, to be determined. Let's go ahead and fire at this leader. So a leader, when it attacks, it rolls four dice, and any overkills burn an oxygen from its target. So we don't want that to happen, especially not to Captain Riggs, who has one oxygen. So she's going to fire her atomic rifle at this leader, because I'd like to hit and s create the psychic scream once these tiles and aliens are revealed. So presumably, hopefully, we can open this, we can flip this, there will be a line of sight, and Ben can shoot this. Well, uh, we'll find out. Let's first of all see how, let's get rid of these leaders. So that is three successes, or three hits, which is awesome. The first one kills the leader. Uh, the second one we can use to either dislodge an alien. Is it in line of sight? In line of sight. Oh, you know what would be fun is dislodge this here. And then the stun would just have that much more effect. I think we're going to do that. And then the other overkill can be spent on psychic scream. It can be spent on stunning anyone in... Is it line of sight? It is line of sight. So she could stun. If the alien fires off, uh, if, if the, the alien brain in a jar stuns all of these. And by the way, I think it's not an alien brain in a jar. I think it's a human brain in a jar. How gruesome is that? And she were to stun this guy. Because this guy would be able to just go here and shoot. So she's going to use the last overkill to stun him. It might be banking too hard on being able to uh, create that psychic scream. But that was just her first turn. Uh, her second turn... So I don't want to move her up here. Because one of these is the elevator. We're moving in this direction. There's no point moving here. 
she does have a non-combat action though. And I don't want to move back here because these guys are all going to move forward and then shoot within one space. Uh, well, let's just fire. Let's just get this guy out of the way so that even if he is stunned, uh, he won't bother us. All right, five dice. Firing at the leader. Uh, one hit. So the leader is dead. And then for her non-combat action, oh gosh. Uh, I like where she's standing. I don't want to move her. Uh, it's non-combat, so we can't fight anything. Uh, I could just use it. There's nobody to heal. I don't want to subdue the brain because I want to use it for, I want to make it uh, do the psychic scream. So I guess we're just going to do this to use our overkill option uh, to stun one alien in line of sight because she has the soft focus lens. And oh, you know what? This guy wasn't in line of sight because of a closed hatch. So she will have stunned one of these spiders because she does have line of sight to that. Uh, and the other stun will be to that spider. So these guys here are going to work towards rejoining everyone. Uh, and they will do, they'll do more rejoining and less biting. And that is it, right? All right. You and Hannah, oh, she did scan. She is now done. So when we activate Professor Russell, he will scan this tile. When we activate Riggs, he will scan this tile. Uh, it's important, well, we need, let's go ahead and do the professor. I, I'd really love to, if I, if I activate him, I can go ahead and shoot this and be assured that whatever is here, but if I wait, uh, I think we're banking too much on Captain Riggs given that he's only gonna get three turns. We don't wanna leave him back here because these guys will rush up. All right, this might be foolish, but and the professor is the weakest one. He does have an atomic rifle, though. All right, let's activate Riggs. He's scanning this tile. All right. It puts back here a saucer man. We don't want a leader back here, by the way, because a leader pulls all these guys two spaces forward. Uh, a leech, which is nice and pokey, and a bug, which spawns on the air vent closest to him, which then is this or this. It likes the number one instead of the number 17. Locally, we have a leader and two saucer men who will hopefully be stunned. And then sitting on the ground, the aliens apparently don't care about this telepathy band. Uh, that's an item that lets a rocketeer use another rocketeer's item. So we do have line of sight to the brain in a jar. I don't just want to shoot. I want to at least move forward. Shoot. I just don't have enough actions. If I go one, two, and then borrow oxygen from someone, then that will get me two actions from here. I do have the ray gun holster. All right, here's what I'm gonna do. It's a little risky, but uh, one, to move one space. <clears throat> two, to move a second space. Borrow an oxygen from uh, the doctor. Three, actually I don't need to do that yet, because it's free action. Three, to fire at the brain in a jar, which is local to us, which means our ray gun is five dice. It's the first use of the ray gun a turn, so the holster makes it six dice. We're firing at the brain in a jar, and what we really want, more than a hit, is an overkill. So what we really want is two successes. Uh, there is one. Shoot a monkey. All right, well that damages it.
Now, if I shoot again, so now I'm going to borrow oxygen from Dr. Garcia and use the oxygen. I actually have things I can do. You know what I'm going to do? Here we go. It's time to wave a flag around. So the flag gives everyone in line of sight, which in this case is everyone, one additional action point. So we're going to use the flag. I'm going to discard this because there's no way to recharge it. And then I'm going to put on each character one of these little green things to represent the actions we're going to be using. Uh, all right. So what's scary is I'm worried if I shoot this brain in a jar and kill it without getting an overkill, which would be disastrous because I'm counting on stunning everything. So let's start off using Captain Riggs free action point to fire the pistol. I mean, it's the best odds we're going to get. Everyone's just going to be firing either the atomic rifle. Uh, I see no way to get additional dice. All right, so we really need two hits on this. Otherwise, we'll just have to do the best we can to withstand the withering fire we're going to suffer this round. Let's see, is there anything, any exchanges of items I want to do with him before we continue on? What if he was to take the impossible cube to do his overkill action? I think he will do that. We don't need the replicator yet. Uh, and do we care about the x-ray goggles? Or no. So we're going to use this first. And that lets us roll five dice against our overkill ability, which is to hand out command actions. So this is using the. We've used it this turn. Uh, which is no hits. You're a terrible commander. You know what? It's just that impossible cube is hard to read. The instructions on it are terrible. Horrible manual. Uh, so now, so sorry, I am now the green cube I removed. That is his pistol on the brain in a jar. Let's just do it. Sweet. Uh, perfect. All right, so we got three successes. We hit the brain in a jar. We create the psychic scream, and we have an overkill left to hand one of these out. So let's give this to Yeoman Hannah. Or Cookie, as I like to call her. We're close enough. Uh, the brain in a jar is destroyed. And we use one of the overkills on its psychic scream, which does a lot of stunning. Uh, right, there we go. Um, now, everyone here has a free action still. Um, and we haven't re revealed this. Can we save that action? I think is it an immediately used... All Rocketeers in line of sight may immediately spend one action point. Yeah, so it's not like I can save it or bank it. Uh, okay, well, let's then have... I guess let's just shoot at stuff on the ground, right? So Yeoman Hanna will use her action point to fire the atomic rifle at this leader. We don't want him dogging our steps. Uh, that is no hits. Great work, Yeoman Hanna. Uh, the professor will fire his atomic rifle at that leader. Oh no, the professor, yeah, the professor's two spaces away. He does have line of sight. Uh, there you go. One, two, three successes. So we kill the leader. We can then use the overkill on the leader to stun any alien, any saucerman or alien leader. Let's stun him. Uh, and then we can use an overkill. Uh, who is that, the professor, on a hatch? Maybe pre-open this hatch as if the professor will want to move in, which could be dangerous because we don't know what's going to be there. Uh, the professor only has four health. I mean, how bad can it be? Everything's stunned. Uh, let's see, the atomic rifle will, can also dislodge a target. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, by the way, when you do a psychic scream from killing the leader, the target does not have to be in line of sight. Let me verify that. Uh, leader, 
uh, overkill, psychic scream, stun one leader or saucer man, ignore line of sight. Yeah. Uh, I think we're going to pre-open this hatch. I'm going to feel really silly if there's three leeches here. I mean, otherwise the leeches are just going to walk there and kill him anyway. So let's just do that. Is that foolish? Like opening a hatch to a dark room where you don't even know what's in it? Perhaps. Uh, all right, and then finally, Dr. Garcia can use his free action point, rallying to the flag to, uh, I mean, I hate to waste it just healing up Captain Riggs. Three dice using the air knife to kill spiders, maybe get blood. Not very spectacular, but we're going to do it. And he's still got that extra command action point. As does Yeoman Hanna. And we killed one spider. I'll take it. It was stunned. How hard was that to do? Uh, and that, oh, by the way, that you are done, done, done. Uh, right, and then that was you being done, right? Yeah, and you waved the flag. So now it is the professor's turn. He will scan this, which has an open hatch leading into it. It had an open hatch anyway, but, oh, no, yeah, it didn't have an open hatch anyway because the hatch was on that tile. Spawning back here is a no effect. So there are three more of those out here. Locally, we have, yikes, a terrible time for a brain to show up. So the brain's attack is to basically leech action points from everyone within two spaces. Uh, and a thrall, which is good. I kind of wanted a thrall to be in front of us. And one leech. All right, and then lying on the ground. A mentality helmet, which protects a rocketeer from a psychic attack or a panic. Well, you've got an atomic rifle. Leeches are really dangerous. Uh, the brain in a jar, again, if we do a psychic scream, it would knock these guys out. We could attack the brain in a jar and we could try to subdue it. We certainly have the IQ for it, but we have to do a point of damage to it first. So he has an atomic rifle. He doesn't have any additional actions, but he can use an oxygen if he needs to. Also, if he moseys over to the tile with Yeoman Hanna, we could get this accelerator hypo and then refill all of our actions. All right, let's fire the atomic rifle at the brain in a jar. That'll give us a sense for, because we don't want everyone to lose an action point. That right there, because that's four actions out the window. That's the main thing we want to avoid. So the atomic rifle firing with five dice. What we really need here is, actually what we really need is to kill it. So I don't, uh, an overkill would be nice to stun the leech, but I'm not that concerned. Uh, how about a nothing? Nice work. Let's fire again. There is one hit and two more successes for overkills. So the hit with the atomic rifle, uh, we could dislodge an alien. That doesn't help. Uh, I think we're just going to cause the psychic scream. And are there any hatches we want to manipulate? If we lock this, these guys are going to have to come up here, which... I think will help us. I mean, I, I, hopefully we'll be out of dodge before these guys become an issue, but I guess lock this hatch. Sealed, locked. Uh, by the way, these little, see these little uh, hatch open. Get that to focus on that. Yeah, you don't need to focus there. And the other side is a uh, hatch sealed. So these, you will note, are the perfect size to lay across one of the uh, hex edges. Except they didn't come that way. They came about this much wider so that when you had a situation like this, 
where you had two of them together, they were overlapping each other and getting in the way. And so what I did was clipped the corners off and then used counter cutters to round the counter edges. Wait, I want to make sure to get that there. Look how beautiful that is. So if you buy this game, you know, if you're, if you're looking at this video and thinking, oh, how elegant that is. Yeah, that's, that's a mod I made. If you buy this game, you got to do that yourself. Oh, so I am going to go ahead and lock this hatch, which only lasts one turn, but it'll at least slow these guys down. I mean, what else can I do with the overkill? Uh, I can dislodge someone. I'm not that concerned with where these guys are here, right? I'm not that concerned with where people are. Uh, I did the scream already, and uh, otherwise manipulating hatches is what the professor does, so we'll just lock that. So there we go. Uh, the professor then does not have to use any oxygen. Oh, no, no, I still haven't killed the brain in a jar. Shoot a dang monkey. I damaged it. So if I walk forward and then disable it, I can carry it around and get another point of IQ. Let's try that because we have various things to help us with IQ checks. So we are gonna move forward. And oh, look, we're out of actions, but we're gonna spend an oxygen to attempt to disable the brain in a jar. All we need is one hit on an IQ roll to disable it. If we get overkills, overkills for the disable a brain in a jar are dominate the brain in a jar, which would mean draw this and carry it around. So here's a situation where we definitely want to make sure we get overkills. So let's use everything we've got. We're going to read a reference book. We're going to consult, uh, we'll consult this uh, strangely glowing orb. We're going to consult the professor that we rescued. Let's see what we get. Oh, excuse me, he's a scientist, not a professor. Uh, we will be using reading a reference book and gazing into this strangely glowing orb. So that's plus three dice. We get five dice because our IQ is five. There's one for the scientist, one for the reference manual, one for the orb. Am I forgetting anything? I don't think so. All right, brain in a jar, take this. Okay, one, two, three successes. So, that was a success. The first disables the brain in a jar. The second dominates it. And this is just like an extra IQ point. And then the third, uh, once again, we can use our, oh, 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 no, and then the third, I'm waiting to do this, goes onto the tape recorder. So we can listen to our struggle with the brain on a jar and presumably be enlightened towards something we can do later on. It's a non-combat overkill. So when we have to research a schematic, and by the way, we need a second one of those, or try to rescue our second thrall, it will guarantee us an overkill, which is awesome. All right, so that was the end of the professor's turn, which was the end of the turn as a whole. Let's see, do I need to do it? Oh, no, he's alone. He can't trade with anyone. I will pick up the mentality helmet, which I forgot, which will protect him against panic and uh, psychic and mind control. The mentality helmet, uh, which is good because he's only got one oxygen left. We don't want him to panic. Uh, Put it there, and it's got two charges. And now onto the monster turn. Remember, we go in order of sentience, the smartest first. Let's uh, activate the brains in a jar. Oh, they're all dead. Uh, let's go to the leader. Oh, the leaders are all dead. Uh, let's go to Vanilla Thrall. Oh, most of them are stunned. Uh, but these guys back here do try to move forward. Uh, let's see, is that one stunned? Yeah, so they can't go this way. They're going to go, uh, actually they want to go towards the professor. No, they want to go towards the closest. So one, two, three, these guys are closest because he's four away. So uh, they're clearly going to go here. Their range is one. They still can't fire at anything. 
Uh, next we have, uh, remember that uh, thralls, right? So these guys go forward, uh, they're equidistant, they wanna go towards the professor because he went last. So they move here. Oh, speaking of which, I'll be able to disable this guy next turn. Uh, dumber than thralls, but not quite as dumb as bugs, are leeches. They go through this opening here. These are locked. The leech can't go through a door, or their clothes can't go through a door, so the leech comes here. Now the dumb bugs, so stunned, stunned. Is this correct? One unstunned? There shouldn't be an unstunned bug here. I think I just didn't stun him. Is that correct? Oh, no, I think Hannah stunned him. Right, no, I've got this right, okay. So these guys are stunned. So it's basically these three bugs are all concerned with creating a swarm. So this hatch is locked. Can bugs go through a locked hatch? No, of course they can't. Yeah, bugs can't go through a locked hatch. So this guy comes here, this guy comes here, and this guy comes here. And now we have a cohesive swarm, or at least we will, until these guys wake up. Uh, so these bugs are all busy joining each other rather than attacking us, and that's fine by me. And that is the end of the monster turn, the alien turn. So we go to clean up, which all hatches revert to their normal state. The exception being a heat ray would cause permanent changes to hatches. Let's take these crystals off of these gears to show that they can be used again. All stunned aliens, unstunned. Welcome back to the party, guys. The bugs wake up. Uh, all of these stunned fellows. And he got stunned when his leader died. Uh, and there we go. So now we reset these tokens. And we reset our action points. And on to the, the four, fourth turn.